Match filtering is a vital topic when we come to consider pulses being detected in noise. So that could be the radar situation, sonar, or data comms. We're going to examine this in the case of a complex chirped pulse. And furthermore, it's going to be one which is not just straight uh, linear sweep. It's going to be piecewise linear segments that go to make it up. So a little bit uh, unusual situation. Here's the model all set up to take this and go with it. First thing to notice is that we're using, as a way of generating our, our chirp pulses, we're actually using a filter. And we're impulsing that filter by a periodic impulse train. And this being an FIR filter, then of course we can arrange matters such that we get a periodic waveform in which the wave, the pulse shape, is indeed the B coefficients of this FIR filter. Uh, that pulse is going to get launched off here. It's going to be received by two uh, two filters here at the receiver. One is going to be a, we expect to be a bad one, one of quite a wonderful one. The bad one will simply use the very same coefficients that we transmitted with. The good one will be to use those coefficients, but flip and conjugate them and load them in here. This will give us the filter which is matched, the best possible filter, in white noise conditions. We are furthermore going to be looking on the scopes out here to see what we've got. And the other thing I want to point out is inside this blocks here, which is actually generating these coefficients, how can we go about it? Well, of course, we could write an M file and generate the coefficients and load them into the MATLAB workspace and then broadcast them up to blocks. But uh, we, it, we would like to have more flexibility than that, particularly since we're going to have a lot of linear segments. So what we can do is turn matters on their head and actually use a signal generator to produce the coefficients of a filter. So this off-the-shelf uh, piecewise chirp is in, in Speedster. We, it comes out as a sample based signal, and we have to convert that into a vector suitable for loading into an FIR filter. Uh, the particular pattern we're going to use is a strange one. For uh, 0 to the 100th sample, we're going to uh, sweep from minus 4 kilohertz up to plus 4,000 uh, 4, hertz up to uh, 5,000 hertz, and then sweep down to 800 hertz. So, no way is it symmetric, and of course, no way is it going to be a real pulse. It's going to be a complex one. When we run it, that's borne out by what we see here. This is, uh, we're tapping off here and looking at just at the transmitted pulse, and you can see the strange shape and the real and imaginary channel of it, and an even stranger looking spectrum. And that goes launching off down here. We then hit the, what we expect to be the bad filter, and we look at the response of that filter after it's been hit by this signal coming in. So here we have the uh, plot of all this. Let me kill the white plot because that's something we'll consider in a moment. We do see that there's some sort of peak business happening here. And we do see uh, a very similar sort of spectrum to what we had before. We're about to see that again in magnitude terms on the other channel. So uh, we can see the size of this thing about minus 0.6 or so. Uh, now let me restore that and get rid of the yellow one and look at the white one. The white one is what happens when we come out of the match filter. So I'm right here. And when I look at that, I can see popping big pig here, right at this detection point. In fact, it's zero on the imaginary channel. And I then come to look at this 3D plot. This is a useful thing that we have in Speedster so that we can look at a time history of multiple channels all lined up at the same time. We can put them on top of each other. And we see our good result, a peak of, of some one uh, units. These are all have the same uh, have unit energy on these impulse responses. And I see this big peak right here. This is good. I see, sort of unusually, another peak. And that's the one to, from the bad channel. But no way is it threatening the good result of this. It's down about 0.6 or so. Well, what's on this other channel can be examined. It's down in these side lobe levels. I can go and look at that and artificially magnify its size, and I can see that it's completely flat. Let me take it back down. So why is it completely flat? Well, that's nothing more than the modulus of what we transmitted.
square root of the sum of the squares of those two components. Much more interesting to me is the great disparity between these two shapes here, showing that, of course, the match filter does win. <clears throat> now, I have quite uh, similar sort of side lobe levels. This is unusual. This is some artifact being uh, brought about by the, the way that we're sweeping these, these pulses. You don't see this in, in many textbooks. So let me do the sweep in a different way. Let me uh, simply go DC, uh, sorry, time equals zero, and go for 150 samples and sweep DC to 10,000 hertz because I've got a 20,000 hertz sampling rate, and I sweep this. Now, this is more of a typical situation. Transmit waveforms again. Come over here and look. Okay, very, very different thing when I kill the white one now. Notice all this stuff is down low level. Nothing, nothing approaching a peak. Uh, and furthermore, this is borne out when I come here and I see that not only, I suppose I could bring the, the cyan one up. This would uh, perhaps help my visibility. So it's artificially magnified up. And you can see that what it is, it's diving down to zero right at this detection point, and it's otherwise more or less flat insofar as its side lobe level goes. If I take it back down to its natural altitude, I see that in fact the, uh, the match filter is beating it much, much better with very much lower side lobes. This is your typical uh, pulse compression with side lobes, hopefully even lower than this if you can arrange it, but doing certainly a much better job than this filter up here. So we can explore all these issues with these tools, uh, and we see that we've got great flexibility.